In 2010, a 40-year-old man from Wales presented to his local GP as him and his partner had been trying to conceive for six years with no success. In addition, he complained of a low sex drive and erectile dysfunction. On examination, the GP noticed he had a muscular physical appearance and normal secondary sexual characteristics. However, with one exception, both of his testicles were four times smaller than normal. The GP subsequently conducted an infertility screen, which found that the patient's total testosterone level was five times lower than the lower limit of normal. What was more concerning, however, was the patient's sperm count, which equaled precisely zero spermatozoa per milliliter. For context, the normal sperm count is greater than or equal to 15 million spermatozoa per milliliter. So what could have caused this patient's symptoms and investigation results? And is there anything that can be done to treat him? As I'm sure many of you guessed, the reason is due to the use of anabolic steroids. This particular patient reported taking nandrolone, testosterone and growth hormone for over 10 years. However, he stopped taking anabolic steroids over two years ago. To understand what happened to this patient, it's first important to look at some physiology. Everything in the body needs to be kept within certain parameters. Your internal temperature, oxygen levels, blood glucose, everything. Too much or too little of anything can be harmful. This constant internal state is called homeostasis, which translates to staying the same. Testosterone is no exception to this rule. Too little can result in muscle loss, erectile dysfunction, and a whole host of other symptoms. Too much can cause acne, alopecia, gynecomastia, you get the picture. So to maintain testosterone levels within a certain range, the body has a feedback mechanism which starts with a structure in the brain called the hypothalamus. Hypo is Greek for below, and thalamus is Greek for inner chamber. The thalamus is another structure in the brain which relays sensory information from the brainstem to the cerebral cortex. So essentially, the hypothalamus is a structure below another structure. The hypothalamus measures the concentration of testosterone in the blood. If it detects low testosterone levels, it secretes gonadotropin-releasing hormone. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone travels to another structure in the brain called the pituitary gland and stimulates the release of gonadotropins. Gonadotropin is Greek for acting on the gonads. For context, the gonads are the organs in the body that produce the gametes, in other words, the sperm and the egg cells. So the male gonads are the testes and the female gonads are the ovaries. In males, gonadotropins travel to the testes and stimulate Leydig cells to produce testosterone. This whole system is called the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis or HPG axis for short. Basically, think of the hypothalamus as the boss, the pituitary gland as the manager and the gonads as the factory workers. The boss makes the decisions, he tells the manager what he wants to happen and the manager relays the information to the factory workers to either work harder or take a Break. Now, the opposite of this process also occurs. If testosterone levels are too high, the hypothalamus secretes less GnRH. Therefore, the pituitary gland secretes less gonadotropins and the testes produce less testosterone. This is the exact process that occurs in people who take anabolic steroids. In steroid users, testosterone levels are so high that the Leydig cells in the testes don't produce any testosterone at all. And like with muscles, if you don't use them, you lose them, resulting in testicular atrophy. As high intratesticular testosterone levels are required to stimulate sperm production. When the testicles stop producing endogenous testosterone, so too do they stop producing sperm cells, resulting in a low sperm count and infertility. So what happens once an individual stops taking anabolic steroids? Once an individual stops taking anabolic steroids, they will obviously have a massive drop in testosterone levels. However, because the HPG axis has been suppressed for so long, it does not respond straight away. It's a bit like someone shouting at you to do something when you've just woken up from a sixth month nap. It is difficult to say exactly how long it will take the HPG axis to recover once an individual stops taking anabolic steroids, as it depends on many factors, including what steroid or steroid stack the individual took. Steroids that suppress the HPG axis the most are those with strong androgen receptor affinities such as 19 nortestosterone and its derivatives, and steroids with long half-lives such as those with long esters. The steroid dose, the duration of use, if the individual was cycling or blasting and cruising, and of course genetic variation. With this in mind, a number of studies have estimated it takes approximately 6 to 18 months for the HPG axis to recover after stopping anabolic steroids. Although the HPG axis may recover to a degree, this does not mean that testicular function will return back to baseline. A 2016 study from Denmark found that 27% of former steroid users had testosterone levels below the lower limit of normal over two years after stopping anabolic steroids. So is there anything that can be done to treat our patient trying to conceive? The answer is yes. There are three drugs typically used in 
post cycle therapy to support endogenous testosterone and sperm production. The first drug is called human chorionic gonadotropin or HCG. HCG has been shown to maintain and at high doses increase intratesticular testosterone levels, thereby maintaining sperm production. The second class of drugs are called selective estrogen receptor modulators or SERMs. SERMs act by blocking estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, which stimulates increased GnRH and gonadotropin production, thereby also stimulating endogenous testosterone production. Examples include clomiphene and tamoxifen. The final class of drugs are called aromatase inhibitors. Aromatase is an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of testosterone to estrogen. Aromatase inhibitors have two benefits. Firstly, they prevent a spike in estrogen levels that would otherwise occur from the excess exogenous androgens being metabolized, thereby preventing estrogen-associated conditions such as gynecomastia. Secondly, aromatase inhibitors have also been shown to elevate gonadotropins and subsequently endogenous testosterone production. With treatment, our patient did recover his testosterone levels to within the normal range, albeit on the lower end. However, with his sperm count only recovering to 100,000 spermatozoa per milliliter, he was unfortunately left with primary gonadal failure and infertility.